I was um, very intensely and quickly trying to um, bust out the the baby bison armature, and Tyler <laughs> said, "You're you're down to the wire on this on this one." <laughs> so um, I don't. I'm delayed. I don't see yeah. us yet. Do you see us? Not yet. There you are. Oh, okay. So good morning, everybody. Um, I have Lisa with me, and her request was for the American Bison. Everybody, um, I have Lisa with me, and you need to mute her. Oh, Lisa, will you mute your sound? Yeah, that was me. Okay, it's off. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's always I muted mine, and like it's it's always a little moment of figuring everything out here. Okay, so I'm very excited because there's lots of um, Lots of possibilities with this project. The armature is, the shape of them is a little bit different from other cloven hooved animals that we've made, like the reindeer and the um, moose and the, the fawn, you know, doe and fawn. So there's some things to learn about there. And then um, Lisa wanted to make a white bison as well, which I've looked up and they're really beautiful, very cool looking. So we're going to talk about brown and white. And in my effort to figure out the armature, I inadvertently made a whole family. So I'm going to um, share the adult and the baby bison. And then when we post um, the sketch that I do with all of the information, I will share all three. Um, so if you want to take notes during the live stream, that's great. And then I try to follow up with the information that we covered as a little sketch or post on Facebook. So, um, Lisa, tell us uh, where you are in the world so everybody knows. I'm in Louisville, and Kentucky. <laughs> and were you here once or twice? I was there once for the moose the weekend. Moose. Okay, that's what I was, that's the way I remembered. My girlfriend. Yeah, that, that was fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so before we talk supplies and shop, um, I'm going to go over the armature. And because the bison is so front heavy and there's they have a huge belly and they have huge neck and head. I went ahead and used the 12 gauge wire for the armature. And then the second wires on the legs are 14 gauge. Um, you could use a second 12 gauge. It always feels a little bit much to me, but it is easier to twist two of the same gauge wires together. A little trickier to twist a 12 and 14 gauge together. So I'm going to um, just go through the armature and um, tab it. I think well, let's try the angle and see, just see how that goes because um, it's too much for you to hold up. Um, okay, so let me give you guys the wire measurements. Actually, maybe, I, yeah, the side's fine. Yeah, the side is fine. So for the big bison, so this is the first one I made. And I'm calling her a her. Um, she ended up, I felt a little small. I wanted to make it fairly relative to scale to the moose and like the reindeer, for example. So this is the second one. And for this, I used a 34 inch and a 36 inch 12 gauge. So I have those here. And their head is set very low. So I did the thing, we do, did it with the pig, if anybody has made the pig, where I have the head and neck come out from under the second wire instead of over. It just helps get that, um, that head set nice and low. So the first thing I'm gonna do is twist together. Let's see what I did here six inches for the head and neck. And then the head is going to be 
about three inches, and the neck is going to be, oh wait, what did we do? Head and neck, six inches, about two and a half and three and a half. So just slightly off center for the head and neck. And then the second wire, we want to find the center. Is the neck longer or the head? The neck is a little bit longer. And then normally I put it here and I actually have to do it that way because I cannot make my brain do it this way. <laughs> so what I do is I do it the normal way and I twist two, uh, one and a half times. So to there, and then I turn it this way. So let me just go ahead and do it. Instead of two full times, I'm going one and a half there and then I take it and I want the neck to come out from under that second wire so then I have to rebend this I know that's super wacky but that's the only way that I can get it to happen if there's another way that you can get it to happen then then go ahead and do that 36 inch is the second wire right? 36 inch 34 is the first and 36 inch is the second this is a little wobbly so instead of one and a half I could go two and a half and give it another twist. You just don't want it to get too long. Okay. So now I'm going to twist the torso is seven inches and that's from the front leg to the end of the twist. Okay, so then we have two 14 gauge wires at 22 inches. So it doesn't matter which one I pick up. Just try to get everything really aligned. And then I want to make a solid like two inch hump on the back. Their skeleton is pretty crazy. The, um, I don't remember what the part of the bone that comes off of the back of the spine is, but on the bison, those bones at the withers can be a foot long. So, and that's needed because they're supporting their gigantic, um, like from their shoulder all the way to their head. This, this counterbalance is needed to hold, to attach the muscles, to hold everything up. And then we want to twist the legs together. Um, do, 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 I know I wrote it down. Seven inches, twist seven inches. I think it's six inches but I'm just going to twist down and then I'll measure and tell you when I'm twisting a thicker and thinner wire. I try to think about keeping the thin wire straight and wrapping the thicker wire around it. And then that seems to sort of help them marry together evenly. If you don't make that concerted effort, it's very easy for the 14 gauge uh, wire to do all the work and just go around the 12 gauge, which you don't want. Um, you want them to be evenly twisted. Any questions or anything? Uh, no, sort of just somebody, buzzing along. No, you're good. Somebody would like me to align their spine I know. Me too. And I swear to God, you guys, that I'm going, I started seeing a chiropractor and I feel like he's not fixing me on purpose so that I keep coming back. <laughs> Is that a thing? I think that's a thing. Because I know, I know from my old chiropractor that, that he could Get you fix me. Yeah. You might be an extra hot mess right now. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. When I go, I usually am. So that's six inches on each part. Let's see. 
and bring my little ruler. Yes, yeah, six inches. And then on the back legs, we're just lining these right up and we're gonna twist seven inches. So Lisa, have you tried a bison? No. Okay. No, I'm not very good I, at armatures. I haven't I haven't tried one either. And every shop hop we've done, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make this. And then I just I'm buzzing along with so many other things. I haven't had time to finish any of these projects, but they're they each have a bin with their armatures and all their supplies ready to go. Sarah, when you're figuring these out, do you, if you have a bison in your head, do you say, okay, it's like a moose, but I'm changing this part? Absolutely. So one of the things I recommend to people when they're trying to figure out an armature is look at something similar, you know, yeah. like start with something that you already have in your arsenal and then um, adapt, you know, adapt that. So I did start with exactly the moose, um, the moose wire measurements and um, yeah, it was good. It was good. And then I look at the skeletons and I really like to, I mean, I've said this to you guys, I really like to read about the animal because I feel like that helps me understand why they're shaped the way that they're shaped. And so that's helpful. I think this is going to be very, um, one of the things that's cool about them is all their, in all the pictures that I've seen so much, I'm sure it depends on the time of year, but so much of their fur is up front and they're yeah. like gigantic stocky cattle. You know, they have, um, a cow shape less, less with the hip bones. They have more of a sloping, um, a sloping hind end, but super stocky and sort of clean on the back. And then all this billowy, like furry <laughs> stuff on the front. So we'll get that, get to that part um, in terms of supplies. Okay, so now we need, we've got this all ready to go and we just need to make some bends. And I'll tell you where the bends are. I actually came out to the point of a shoulder on this one um, because they do have such a deep, shoulder that you want to come out and get that forward bend at one and a quarter inches approximately. And then I came back to the elbow at one and a half inches. And then come down, down the leg four inches. So that's about, that's about right. Let me give this one one more twist. And then I would start by giving yourself an inch on the toes. Um, uh, probably three quarters might be better, but I'll just start, start with an inch. And then on the hind leg, I made, just like I made a point of the shoulder, I'm making a point of the butt. They have this really, um, big butt bone in their pelvis. And so we're going to mimic that by coming back one inch. So you're sort of almost extending the spine or the look of the length by coming back, but it does angle out and down a little bit. Exaggerate it. There we go. And then we're going to come forward about an inch and three quarters on the stifle. And then we're going to have two inches to the hock and then two inches to the ankle. inch for the feet again. Here, let's see if we can get it lined up on this paper a little bit. So you can see it. That's the old one. This is the one I just made. So they're pretty similar. This one came out, I'm not sure why, it's a little bigger. That happens. <laughs> Okay, so for the baby, I'm not gonna make it. I'm just gonna tell you the wires that I use. This is more like a youth 
not like a newborn baby. No. Um, but I used uh, 14 gauge, two 14 gauge wires. Let me pull this down. And of course you want to get a little, little angle to their ankles. Okay. And the 14 gauge wires were 28, 30, and two at 16 inches. And I will write, draw a drawing and write the proportions of all the bends on that one. <laughs> yeah, we'll post it. Yeah, we'll definitely share, share all of that. Um, yeah, so the things to remember are the gigantic shoulder hump. Um, they have a huge rib cage and I sort of thought about, okay, do I make the rib cage? Because sometimes I'll make a wire rib cage and then you can just sort of stuff it with core wool instead of having it be super dense, but it's not, it's, I think you guys can fit it with a nice big egg shape of, of core wool to make that, to make that rib cage. And, um, the rest of their look is a lot about the fur on their head, neck, and front legs. They have a beard um, or, you know, kind of like a bell, like a moose, like a goatee. They have just this huge neck and shoulder and tons of fur. So we'll talk about that. So one cool thing that I was figuring out, oh, when we actually it came up the very first shop hop, we were talking about the centaur and the balance. And it got us thinking about a counterweight. So I wanted to show you guys uh, what I came up with. And, you know, we were trying to figure out if we can offer these and maybe we will. But in the meantime, this is a piece of stab it, like a stab it patch, basically. And I filled it with um, steel shot. So this weighs three ounces, this little thing. Uh, which is quite a bit. The bison project will probably be in the seven ounce range. Most of that being towards the front. So if when you're felting, once you have your armature wrapped, you can work this weight in on the butt and wrap it and you just keep it in there and stab it, it's going to give you a counterweight to all that that head, neck, and horns that's hanging out in in front of him. So that that was just one idea. And the reason that I use didn't use rice is just to prevent any long term, you know, pantry moth kind of situation. Like you just you just don't know because um, still shot is not compostable, so it'll last in there forever. But it's basically like a cornhole bag. That's what that's what it feels like, and. Um, so also on the wires, I didn't do this because I put it on after, but you're going to want some, either a piece of 14 gauge or 22 gauge for the horns and tail. And this project, I didn't totally deep dive into whether you're doing tendons or not, but it seems like some wrap, either a wrapped too thick or a wrapped uh, 22 gauge tendon would look good, especially on the hind legs because you're seeing more of the details of the hind leg. Where would Any I questions? Not. What's that? Where would I buy the steel shots? Well, in? it's not, you can get it on Amazon. Oh. <laughs> and I forget. You got a big bag. We got a big bag. It was a lot smaller than I thought it would be. It's teeny tiny little hmm. pellets. I'll have to look up. I'll have to look it up. And we can share that too, but you don't, you don't want a gigantic bag. It's, no, no. it's not inexpensive. And I forget, um, Talbot, do you remember we were looking at steel versus lead? Lead. Well, maybe I got lead. No, we got steel. We got steel. One of them. I think it's best to avoid lead. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We went with steel. So I don't know very much about it. Um, other than I was just looking for it to try this. So I, I'm not a steel shot um, expert, but I'm sure it's not hard to get. Okay. 
Okay. So another tip I'm going to share before we shop is just some um, fur technique ideas. Can you zoom in on this? Uh, sure. You can just come right, right on to it. So um, Sabine actually had a technique that she used with fur and pre-felt. This is a piece of the Sinopia. This is actually Sinopia batting, but you could use the Sinopia pre-felt. You could use brown batting. I did not try on the Merino pre-felt, although I think that Sabine has used that. And I, she can maybe weigh in. I don't know if she's on or not, but um, she can weigh in. I think it takes a lot of stabbing and that maybe I'm not as patient as she is. So what I did was I took the fur and I sprayed it with um with water with water from just like a spritzer and i crunched it up and i got it nice and curly now this one i didn't do it and i'm not as happy with it but i was sort of experimenting so these i got it nice and curly and i let it dry all curly and then unlike how we're usually doing things i totally messed it up i just pulled it all apart the the more random it could be the better and then I stabbed it onto the batting with a little bit of a similar, I think I used woodland, just a little bit of wool, like kind of laced over it. And you get this curly look. And I'd say it might be hard to come across on camera. But then I took scissors and I cut all these curls off basically. So I cut a small bit of fur off and then you can use um, reverse needle and or the clover rake tool and just brush it. And it, it kind of comes like fur without doing the fur technique. So this one, I feel like you can see the, um, see it. This is uncut and combed. And then this side is, is combed. And I think, go ahead. That looks really good. I think I think so. And I think it's going to be, you can take this now, right? It's all felted. And you can, so especially like on their legs, you know, they have this great fur on their front legs. You can take a piece of it and, and go ahead and cut it out and put it on like skin. And then you can even further reverse needle and comb. And I think it's it's going to have a really good look. Um, and they go darker on their head. So I, I was playing with this dark um, mink color. So that is that. And uh, yes, I think it's it's really good. And it's still nice and loose. You totally can felt it, you know, cut it out, felt it on. It would be real easy to patch, um, put different colors and different pieces everywhere. And it's still very feltable. It has a lot of has a lot of give left, um, but it's also very it's also strong. Especially once you stab this all on. Once you stab it on, you're probably going to have to sort of re rake and reverse needle it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be good. Okay, now I have a list of supplies. And we will go through everything. And I'm just going to go through everything as if you have and own nothing. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's to give as, as much of a list as we can. And then you guys decide what you might need. And again, there's with a brown animal, there's so much possibility. It's just, you know, there's a lot of browns. But for this project... I would definitely, let's see, should I do brown and then white or should I do them at the same time as I go from place to place? I'll do them at the same time as I go from place to place. Okay. So I totally see uh, reverse needles in this, <laughs> in this project. If you don't have reverse needles, I recommend them. It's a lot of fun. It's a game changer in a way. And it's a really good tool to have in your tool belt. And then we're going to do, um, have some 22 gauge wire on hand for 
lately I've been wrapping my armature more with that than with pipe cleaner. Um, and it can do our horns and our tail. They don't have too much of a tail, but there is a little tail. And then for this, I would definitely use 12 gauge, especially if you're adding the weight on the hind end. And we've got some 14 gauge wire. Um, I don't think I need little wires. I would just go down the leg. I guess maybe a 26 gauge black wire for the legs and toes, just like we do the moose and the reindeer and everything else. Um, this is the clover rake and um, it's, it's really, it's called a claw and mat cleaner. I'm usually using the little rakey metal end and that works really well to brush the fur. Um, a little bit gentler on the project than something like a dog brush or a um like a carding tool it'll that would just have like maybe too, a little too much coal um yeah i think that's it in terms of wires and then we're gonna want definitely this coffee bean a charcoal would be fine either one would be fine but i'll just pull the it's just brown so I think since I haven't made a bison, I don't know the exact weight, but I'm going to go ahead and get six ounces, four ounces of core might be enough. The white bison we're going to use off white chunky core. So you'll have your regular other needle felting tools. Um, they do, they do have horns not antlers. So you could swax the horns. You could swax the nose. They have a nice shiny black nose or cold wax. Um, cold wax medium works great also. All right. So let's um, talk about the pre-felt options. This is the brown merino pre-felt. Like I said, I didn't play with that when I was playing with that fur technique, but that could work. And we're going to come back to the silk and the fur. I'm going to come over here right now. Um, I don't see the need for merino in this project unless you were wanted to tint a color kind of a different shade. They have a cool um, warm brown sometimes on their back that reminds me of nut, but I think we're going to get it from other um, top coats and house house parted blends. So for the white buffalo, the core situation, uh, we definitely want off white, off white chunky core. And then for the white buffalo, I want um, oats. They they're kind of not true white. They're almost like a platinum. Like a they might have some white, but I would. Unless you're going more fantasy, I would kind of make them like a whitish cream color. And then in some spots, some gen gen tan. So that's, that's your core and blender colors for the white, uh, the white Buffalo. Now, um, <laughs> we have this smooth Brown top. This is actually a great Buffalo color and I was using woodland, but this is sort of like the less expensive because this is house carded. Um, this is more um, sort of economical version of brown. So that works really well. And then in the mohair and alpaca area, white or platinum mohair for your um, white bison would be very cool so you could do a blend you could do white you could do platinum you could do a blend of both i'm going to recommend fur but if you wanted to make your own you know fur kind of texture i would take the 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 mohair and baby alpaca i've got white and fawn 
and then we could add some silk to that. And that would be the part that you're going to like crunch up and make that, that curly, um, curly fur coat. So we, we need a core wool. We need some kind of, you can use the core as your base for that pelt. Like I'm talking about using Sinopia or the, the uh, Merino pre-felt. But you could also just take some core wool, lay it out and sort of pre-felt it yourself and use that. And then we need a top coat color and then we need all the furriness and of course like horns and, and hooves and stuff like that. So the way that I'm thinking about it for the white one is the off-white chunky core, these two um, as blenders, oats and gen gen tan. Then we've got our fur. Now I could use Arctic and platinum fur as well. And then for the coat, the actual coat of the buffalo, I can use, um, I saw one that was kind of silver, which is cool. This is the silver horse coat. So where its coat was very short on its back and hind legs, it had more of this silvery gray color. Okay, then for the brown one, we've got our brown core. We've got our smooth brown top. Now, similarly, I could make a fur. I do not have a, um, a dark mohair. So I've got the two tones of baby alpaca, and then I'm going to pick up some fur. I used bison and mink. So I'll go get that in one second. But when we come through here, the, the seal brown horse coat for the back of the bison where he's not, where his hair's really short and shiny, this will be perfect. That's, that's what I would use. Um, but you could also consider uh, woodland. I'll show you how woodland compares to the smooth brown top. Very, very similar in color. And then where sometimes the bison's a little browner on his back, but darker on, on his head and legs. I actually used um, grizzly when I made that. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that. So that's a choice. And then this is the Sinopia. Um, this is, a, this is like a kind of a pricey option. So Unless you were going to make a bunch of bison, <laughs> this would probably make make eight uh, bison. But that is a great um, starter for your for your pelt. But like I said, you could you could just take um, brown core and make pieces and felt it a little bit. That'd be an option. Yeah, we do have the, a variety. We do have a few of the um, Sinopia. Um, low chroma samplers left and they have the, I'm sorry, the imprimatura, they have the Sinopia in it. Okay. Um, again, these skin tones, Arabica and bronze, always an option for, for browns as well. I didn't get into locks too much. That could be a lot of fun. We don't consistently have exactly the right color locks, but you could look for dark sheep curls and incorporate those as well. So in the fur, I'm going to grab um, bison and mink. And then, oh, um, on that. yeah, sorry. And then um, platinum, we do not, we are out of Arctic right now, but I'm gonna grab platinum for the white bison as well. And then we could use some honey tussa or white mulberry for the white bison. Okay, let me see what, what I've got here and what I'm missing. Let's see. Coffee beans, seal brown, um, grizzly and woodland, canopia, reverse needles, bison and mink fur. Oh, chocolate silk was one option and the alpaca. Okay, I think we're good. Any questions right now? No, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, bleh. Sarah? Yes. 
I am surprised you're not doing locks. My first thought was locks around the head. And you don't yeah, think that. So for the, so for the white, for the white bison, we have a lot of locks right now. Tons of them have a gray element to them. Um, so if you have white locks or cream locks or brown locks, I, I definitely, I could see even, you could either add them as, I kind of like to go extra, you know, I kind of like to exaggerate the rough coat. Yeah. So I could see just putting locks kind of like we did on the reindeer um, or the moose, the moose yeah. bell, the moose neck. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to give options that are always, almost always available. Whereas the right color and texture locks can be hit or miss. But if, okay. if you can, ha can ha if we have them, if you have them in your stash, if Lee has them, you know, or somebody else, yes. Yeah, I think locks okay. would be great. Yeah, sometimes we have dark sheep's curls, no gray in them. Yeah. They're just. Let me go see. You don't have to follow me, but, but let me But the silvery white we have. Yeah. Let's see. It's really nice. Give a tour of the shop. So, this is why everyone needs at least like a dozen bags of locks. I know. Just waiting. I see gray tan. I see natural. Oh, right here. Oh, okay. Oh, there's, yeah, there's only two left. <laughs> We're going to cr create a problem. So these are our dark sheep curls at the moment, which do, do vary. Um, Yeah, they're, they have a bit of a gray in them. So it might be more gray than you want. Yeah. And then the silvery uh, Wensleydale U, this is a Wensleydale Gotland Cross, also has some gray in it. But very pretty. It does have some warm tones as well. There's only a couple of those left, I think. So are you um, making making this project for anyone special or just for yourself? Because it's something you wanted to do. The fun, I was watching, nothing's on TV. So I was watching Longmire for the third time. And there was this buffalo and then the white baby buffalo. And I thought, oh I my God. <laughs> so it's for me. Yes. So now Good. that you've made the, womb, the mother, I'm going to make all three. I'm making a family. Okay, great. Good. And so for the mom, I actually used the same wires. I just, when I made the dad, I just bumped everything up like yeah. half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Yeah. So I will, I'll, I'll put them all, all three. Um, and you know, maybe you want to go a little smaller on the baby, but if you go too small, then it's hard to get the details that you want. You know, so also, I think it's, I think it's nice. too beauty. small. The fur looks funny. It doesn't look like yes. a bison. No, I like the adolescent with the curly around the head. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's all, yeah, you got to think proportions, you know, yeah. with the, with the fiber textures. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to recap. When I build the white buffalo, I'm going to use off white chunky for mainly. Then some places on the eyes and legs, you know, you want to get a little bit of variation. And so I have oats and gen gen tan. Then when you go to make the pelt, you could use flat mat. You could use the off-white chunky core um, and get a base layer. And then you're either using 
well, since we don't have Arctic right now, um, you can mix silks, alpaca, and mohair. You can use um, platinum, platinum fur with white baby alpaca. <laughs> but these are what you're going to blend together, um, or the locks if you have locks, to get that that curly look. And then on the back of the bison, if you want to go really white, you could use Serafina white. The silver might be a little too gray next to all the warm tones. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, it's like we don't really have like a off white top coat we have we passed me the natural pre-felt piece kyla that's right there that's what it was mm -hmm. yeah acacias may be close acacia. but acacia i know but it's just, i don't like to felt with um merino with the, with the straight with merino okay natural compared to acacia. oh this is acacia this is natural so even natural pre-felt could work on the back of the bison just so that it's not natural um, i was just looking I feel like I'm missing something. Anyway, there's an option that I'm missing. Serafina white is pretty white. Okay. And then, okay, so that's the white guy. And then the brown guy. I have coffee bean. And then I have seal brown they're usually dark on their heads so like around their eyes on their legs the bottoms of their legs are dark and then on the on the buffalo's bison's back i would go maybe more um smooth brown top or woodland although some of them are very dark on their back too mm -hmm. it's you just you got to pick a picture that you like and and go with it and then we have either the core or the Sanopia or brown batting. And we have our alpacas and we have our two furs, uh, bison and make. And then I have um, grizzly or you could use bronze just for some lighter browns, some lighter brown tones. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's everything. Does anybody have any questions? Nope, people like the warehouse. No, good. <laughs> we like it too. It, they have hooves. Yes, right? they have cloven hooves. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. We're using the stuff you already picked out for that. Oh, good point. Um, I sometimes... I'll use carob or we have that charcoal core or black. You what? see the picture she was showing? Oh, oh, let me see. I'm sorry. Hold that up again for me. It's going to take me a minute because I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my delayed screen. <laughs> it's coming. Yes. Yeah. I like, I mean, I really like, oh, oh, we don't, I, I like carob. I like carob for hooves because it's not really black. Yeah. And then once you put um, some cold wax or swax on there, it gets that kind of um, hoofy gray color, you know, hardened color. So your hooves are a little lighter than your legs. I think that's a good but look. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, if you make them black and shiny, it looks like, like they've been to a bison show and they got polished up for it. Right. <laughs> it doesn't look like, um, cause hooves are naturally kind of dusty and waxy yeah. looking. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out. And you could use that on the horns as well. Their horns are just kind of nondescript dark. Um, I should write that down so that when I make the list, I remember material and the hooves are the same color across both both bison oh that's a good oh, question 
Do you have a picture, Lisa, of a white? Oh, he's got light horns. That's cool. Yes, this one does. I do have the white. Yeah. And he's got dark. I think it's actually the carob with the cold wax on it will look rather light next to. Yes. Yeah. Do you have a picture of white bison hooves? They're probably gray. No, I don't have the hooves. Yeah. But I do have the yeah. baby baby, and that doesn't even look like a bison. Looks like a cow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With a big head. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I did. It's very cute. Um, yeah, I was reading, you know, online. I was just doing some research and reading, and it's they have such an incredible history. I yeah. Kind of, Look at Incredible. the front. Yes. You really need to exaggerate that. And that's, yeah. that's going to come, that's going to come from like, don't be shy on this height, like this, this height here to the point of shoulder is very deep. And that's, what's going to make that tapered butt look. It's not that the hind legs are shorter or anything. There, he's a square, you know. He's standing square, but you got to build this up quite a bit. And like I said, that rib cage is coming down to these um, to these elbows. So nice and deep. It's about like that. Nice and deep in the rib cage. Nice and tall here. Well out in the chest and point of shoulder. And then, um, some of them had a little scoop here. Some of them didn't. So, but like a nice full neck. And I mean, I don't have too much advice on the shapes of the head other than just, you know, that I was looking at reference pictures since I haven't made it. Um, the eyes are wide. Very wide, very wide apart, and sto obviously stocky, triangular yeah. head. It's it's somewhat cow-like, but um, a little bit more of a of a triangle. Like cows and noses get nice and wide and big again, whereas the buffalo comes yeah um, comes more tapered. And you all, no matter what, like locks on that beard would be would be really fun. Yeah. Yes. But the sloping, the sloping back and that tapered butt um, come from the, all of this being so big. So. And the tail is like everything we've done before. There's nothing unusual. Yeah, I did not, um, I have to say, get too specific on the tail. Yeah. So. You definitely Average. could make a point when you look at your reference images. Yeah, it's like a cow tail. Yeah. So yeah. when you go down, when you go down the back with the twenty-two gauge wire, leave yourself, um, leave yourself two and a half, three inches, and then if you want to, you could fold a little tuft of your locks or fur. Yeah. Um, into the end of that. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a fun one. I'm um, looking at these legs. Would you do the toothpicks? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I think I, I've moved more towards um, uh, wrapped 22 gauge wire, just a piece of, of 22 gauge. If you do the toothpicks, you could do it in the lower leg. Right. But in that in that upper leg, if you want to get that hawk um, tendon, that which is our like Achilles tendon, I would yeah. use a twenty-two gauge wire. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Lots of. Oh my gosh, I love the contrast of the dark curly head to like the lighter brown that's on their neck and shoulders. I yeah. think that's a fun thing to go for, and that's why I was trying, um, you know, two different tones of. 
And uh, what colors would you use for that on the white bison? If, on the white bison. Yeah, if you made one of those. Yeah, it would be the, um, well, we don't have Arctic, so we have the platinum, hmm. but, or the blend, like a blend of silk, mohair, and alpaca. So. All right, I think I pretty much regurgitated everything that I've learned in the last <laughs> in the last three days. Um, One more comment. So, uh huh. Absolutely. Look at the picture. They're just kind of a mess. It's not like doing a horse. That's why I'm so excited about this. Look at the fur and yes, there's there, yes. Are, and I think I will do a good job with that. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I mean, that's, I love that opportunity to exaggerate it, you know, yeah. and to take, take what's there and like, let, this is like the perfect example or time to let the fiber speak, you know, yeah. cause that's what's happening. They're just, they're you can't out there. They like it. Bedhead. Yeah. They have bedhead. You can't what Lisa? Can't be perfect with it. They're not perfect. No, exactly. Don't, um, don't control it too right. much. Exactly. Right. Um, that's why I like making these pelts because you've got these chunks of material instead of trying to do, you know, each little section, you've got this sort of random chunk that you're sculpting into place. You're kind of so. out of control a little bit when you do a pelt. The pelt yes. controls how it's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. That's a good way to put it. Um let me see if I had any other notes that I wanted to share. Um, the males can be 2,000 pounds, six feet high. Oh, there was a funny little illustration that I found about bison. I don't know. It was on like the kids' channel or something. And, and it was naming all the stuff. So the horns were big stabbies. The head was bulldozer. The nose said, do not boop, which <laughs> I thought was funny. The feet were clippy clops. The tail was a danger flag. Um, they had floof, bedhead, Elvis hair. Like it was, it was a little funny take on it. How much bigger is the male than the female? Um, in weight, it can in, be. Looking at it. Yeah. Um, the male is uh, about six feet high. And the females are four to five feet high. Oh, big difference. So you'd have to take, yeah, pretty big difference. Okay. But yeah, the weight too, I was going to say, can be double. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. They both have horns. Both male and female have horns, but the males are usually bigger. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And it's just... You know, I think most people are familiar with the the effort to eradicate um, bison from North America, which was tragic and for very, very many reasons. But when a r article that I was reading said that they they survived because about two dozen found a haven like in this remote center of what is Yellowstone Park now. And they came back from that. Like, just so sad to think that if they hadn't found that hiding place, it, they would have been gone. Too. But it so. wasn't them. They were killed to kill the Indians. I just read this summer. Yeah. Very oh, much. For, yeah, for, yeah. For sport and to, and to. Get rid of um, the Indians. Yep. Yep. Terrible. Terrible. Yep. So beautiful animals. Absolutely incredible Interest. Uh, works of nature. Yes. So thank you for suggesting it. And oh, you're welcome. I'm sure it's going to be a relatively popular project. It's been on my list for a while. Um, okay. Our friend Lee made a life-size bison head, which um, I think you guys can see if you, I think she has it on her website. So that's feltingfarmerlady.com. Wow. And she felted an entire Icelandic pelt and then sort of put that on. And she's very, Lee's always been very good at letting, you know, letting the fiber do its thing and not over controlling it. So that's a fun thing to check out.
Um, does anybody have any questions before we say goodbye? We have until midnight for the sale. Yes. Somebody said they see bison and the muskox are similar. I can't mm -hmm. picture a muskox. Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, and there's other buffalo. There's water buffalo. I think there's a European version of bison. There's some kind of like woodland bison. So we're talking about um, it's called American buffalo or American bison. Mm -hmm. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys. I think our next live is the 24th. We're going to just sit and chat and share before the sale. I was feeling uh, the shop hops have been a lot of fun, but we haven't had a fiber ferry in a while. So, um, so I'm looking forward to that. And we have a few more shop hops um, in place. There was one that we wanted to do August fourth but right now that's not coming to be so I'll, I'll keep you posted but we have some um a couple more lined up and i'm looking forward to those and um yeah i can't wait to see who makes what i saw a lot of kangaroos which was awesome everyone did such a great job and um approached those in different ways so that was cool to see so i'm excited to see some bison Definitely um, share or follow up, Lisa, when you when you get to it. I will. I will. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Anything else, Kyla? Uh, no. Uh, All right. Wait. When wait. did you say the next fiber fairy is? I didn't. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> September eighth, I believe. Oh, really? Okay. So we have the sale because we have the 25th. sale at the end of July. Yep, yeah, and we're gonna yes, it's early September, September eighth. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do a big one in October, which is what we usually do. And then we have the November sale. Actually, <laughs> just yeah. then it's next yeah. year. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, things are rolling along. So thank you so much, Lisa. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Fun. Bye. Yeah, good. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.